absolutely deafening inside this cockpit. You have an engine that is screaming loud in front of you. The cockpit's 140 degrees inside. Everything is shaking, vibrating in its own different way. Why would you want to do something like this? Bottom line is, every pilot wants to go fast. Steve Hinton is trying to set the fastest speed ever accomplished with a propeller-driven piston-engine aircraft. To break this record, you have to be perfect. This is the pinnacle of aviation. Steve's dad broke the record at 499 miles an hour. There's only a few people that have ever stood on top of this mountain. The Wright brothers, Jimmy Doolittle, Glenn Curtis, Howard Hughes. Just these icons of aviation. And Steve believes that he is the man to do it. 535 is the magic number. If we go 535 miles an hour, that's a new world record. All right, last one out. Come on, baby. My dad was definitely a hero of mine. He also air raced, he set world speed records and won several races with an airplane called the Red Baron. And uh, he's alive to tell the tale about it. At the scene of the crash, medics have recovered Steve Hinton from the shattered cockpit of the Baron. This is serious business. And I've been severely hurt. I broke my back and broke my legs when I crashed the Red Baron, for instance, but uh, I, I was young and I healed well. And now this medevac helicopter is the key to survival for Steve Hinton. You know, it's funny being part of an aviation family. When Steve Sr. crashed the Red Baron, I, it never even occurred to me to say, don't fly. You can't separate someone from their soul. Fifteen years ago, was the first time I really got bit by this air racing bug. I dug through my parents' attic and found a bunch of old photographs of my dad from his racing days and found uh, his trophy, which he got for setting the world speed record. He held that record for 10 years until Lyle Shelton broke that same record at 528 miles an hour. It is still considered one of the hardest records to break. The allure just kind of pulled me in, is like this gravitational force. But having an opportunity to break a speed record I thought was uh, beyond a long shot. Our family operates a warbird museum based in Chino, California that is dedicated to preserving, maintaining, flying these aircraft. My sister and I had a crib in my mother's office here while she was doing the books. And some of my earliest memories are waddling out into the hangar and seeing my dad working on an aircraft. You know, he was probably a baby sitting out next to the toolbox when his dad was taking an engine apart. Before he could talk, he probably was already getting it. The uh, warbirds, so to speak, are special in our family. We uh, are really intrigued with the mechanical end of them, the history. They were built for war, they're built for combat, and they're built for killing, but they were the Apollo spaceships in their day. There is a mystique that surrounds these aircraft. There was no computers that built them. They were all hand-built, calculated with slide rules, pencils and paper. You know, to be able to understand how the entire aircraft works is just a really important part of being a pilot of a World War II aircraft. Steve-O has grown up with that expectation that you'll really know your airplane when you work on it. And uh, once he started racing, he started winning. I was able to win my first year out at the age of 22, which bested my dad's record of being the youngest to win an air race. And then I was lucky enough to win seven of eight races over the last eight years. And that was a big deal. He won his first four big races. He boom, 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 won and beat everybody handily without any trouble. 
It was just this total Cinderella story. How many men have tried to win the unlimited gold and have never even won a heat race? There's uh, guys that have done this for 40 years and only won seven times. I felt like the last way to leave your impression on a sport is to go after the speed record because once this breed of airplane is extinct, it won't be capable of being broken again. For this record attempt, we've come to a private ranch, which our sponsor Joe Clark owns, which is an ideal location for the record. He's got his own runway on it, and he's given us the opportunity to try and make history. There's some better places to do this at, but the runway isn't long, and the, the terrain is horrible. I mean, there are literally an infinite amount of areas here that you could safely land this airplane on its belly and not get hurt. If the engine blows, he's got to get it on the ground. We got a lot of runway here and we have overruns at both ends. It's going to take a lot of uh, skill and concentration and, and machinery. I mean, this machine is going to be running at uh, 3,600 horsepower. And there's only maybe two or three other airplanes in the whole world that can do this at this level. The aircraft that we're using to break this record is uh, what's called a North American P-51 Mustang. And we've named it Voodoo. P-51 changed the war. The aerodynamics of the airplane were such that it was far superior to many other aircraft around it. You might say it's an old warbird and you know, there's new airplanes that can do this, and that's just not true. That's as good as it's gonna get. It's a small airframe, which means it's shaped like a bullet. It's real quick. And it really has lent itself into being a nice racing platform. Thank you. You're welcome. My dad and I aren't emotionally close people. It's a very business type of relationship. We've talked about mechanical aspects and how things work, but as far as how would you do this, how would you do that? I haven't gotten much advice from him at all. He thought it would be more beneficial for me to experience my own thought process. They don't have to say I love you every day. The fact that they work together on things is the bond and it's um, kind of the glue that holds us together. Um, I know you know this, but I'll say it anyway, the time of day makes a big difference. And you know, it's like in Reno with the clouds, the, the ground looks different every time, so that's why the more flying, the better. We're about 2 o'clock right now, and this will, you know, we're going to be doing it between 2, 3, 4, 5, somewhere in there, yeah. so. He's assuming a lot of responsibility, which is a lot of load. I've kept an eye on him quite a bit, but you know, he's handling it well, but I think it's adding to the stress level that he doesn't need. Prior to flying the airplane, I'm 110% mechanic. The big key to us breaking this record will be the aerodynamics of the airplane. And the design is so solid that we can push the limits a little bit more than what it was designed for. Every aspect of this airplane is so far beyond the envelope it was originally intended to do. Because of that, the engine is commonly breaking. This engine is going to be completely stressed. It's going to be flying at power longer than it has to during an air race. There's a tremendous amount of maintenance that goes on with it. That includes test flying at full power. It's probably the most dangerous part of this record is the engine. What you're trying to do is get it to go to the absolute maximum without braking. There's this fuse. Once we start opening up the throttle on this engine, that fuse gets lit. We don't know how long the fuse is. No one knows how long the fuse is. 
It's a lot of passion. You have mechanical failures, you have lots of late nights. You gotta always try and see that light at the end of the tunnel. Even though you may not see it, you have to have faith that it's there. Should be starting up here in the next half an hour. Um, obviously the first priority is that this is a safe flight. We're obviously going for a, a speed record, but the priority is to be on the ground safely. So uh, if the airplane does have some sort of an emergency or a mayday, uh, we ask that everybody just stay away from the runway. I'm not going to swerve to miss you, so get off the <laughs> runway. Um, <laughs> Pilots have been looking at the old record for many, many years, waiting for someone to come and break it. To do it, he must fly over this course four times, two times in each direction, to come up with a final average speed. He must exceed the current record by 1%. My job today is to be the uh, chase plane. If I see something doesn't look right, I'll be able to watch him and help him. So um, I'll be right on his shoulder with him. If we're lucky, we'll get one crack at this record. If we're not successful, we are really rolling the dice to try and set this thing again. These engines are like people, they talk to you. And in this particular case, it's gotta last probably 10, 15 minutes. Once we start opening up the throttle on this engine, it could go within the first 45 seconds. I thought I heard off power, but I'm not sure. And I don't know what that means. So we're just setting up for uh, making an attempt on the speed record and uh, uh, climbed out, got to altitude, started coming up on power, everything was going nice. Uh, got the course in sight, we were up on full power for about 10 or 15 seconds and got a little sneeze like a whoop and then a boom! And it blew a bunch of shit out of the exhaust stacks so we declared a mayday and uh, cruised on in and landed. It was still making power, still out of oil pressure. So we don't know what the issue is at the moment. Um, there is cooling all over the right side of the airplane, so we will uh, go back to work and see if we can figure out what's happening and uh, how to get her back in the sky. That's good. Yeah. Fuck. Crew's gonna have to look it over and determine what happened. It's, it could be major or it could be something simple. We don't know um, at this point, but uh, the airplane's here, Steve's here. So uh, if it uh, just needs a, a part or something, we'll find a way. You really have to be ready for those punches to get thrown at you in this industry because it is 75-year-old equipment. But uh, I'm so proud of these guys. Normal people wouldn't do the stuff that we're doing. They would have quit a long time ago. It's not natural to fly. I don't care who you are. You have to get experience. 
understanding limitations and understanding consequences. Unfortunately, we've had friends who aren't with us anymore, and Steve has gone through that. As a mother, you can't go through these kinds of things unaffected. You vibrate with every core of your being during these experiences. I don't want to watch him do this again. <laughs> and I know, I know that's what they do. They blow the engine, they change it, and they go again. And, and it's just uh, not going to be very easy to watch. All right, if you like it, I like it. The pilot has to fly perfect. The airframe has to work perfect. The engine needs to run perfectly. Everything has to come together for it to be perfect. Okay. We're not doing this record for somebody else. We're not doing this for another group of people. We're not trying to prove that we're faster than anybody. We're doing this for ourselves. Okay, we're gonna start coming close with the door. Okay, clock is rolling. Got it. It's absolutely deafening inside this cockpit. You have an engine that is screaming loud in front of you. There's 18 different gauges in the cockpit that you're trying to keep track of. In the midst of all this chaos, you talk to the engine, talk to the airplane. It's you and the piece of equipment, you and the machine. Okay, I got DD on induction, we'll leave it there. It's been an all-consuming project for the last four to five years. All of this work throughout the year, all of these moments of dreaming. Telemetry is good. It essentially comes down to 30 seconds. He's blowing oil. He's losing power? Yep. Check the oil pressure. Yeah, it's wiggling. We're going to turn it back around here. The first thing in your mind is, come on, you can hold together. There's only a little bit left. All right, last half. Come on, baby. Hey, come on, baby. You know, on the one hand, uh, it was successful. Uh, we're back on the ground. Between the third and fourth pass, the oil pressure started falling off. So it'll be interesting to see how the speeds reflect the four passes. Uh, we'll wait for about an hour until uh, Brian Utley from the NAA does his calculations and makes sure uh, I didn't break any altitude restrictions. And then we'll get an average of the four laps and see what we got. Let me walk you through the numbers because I think it's important to know the numbers. Uh, the old record, 528.33. You said old record, so that means there's a new record. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we must uh, exceed the current record by 1%. So, uh, with the first lap, the first pass, uh, Steve averaged 554.69 miles an hour. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. On the second pass, he averaged 527.34 for an average over the two passes of 541. On the third pass, he averaged 528.48 miles an hour for a three-pass average of 536.84. On the fourth pass, unfortunately, he only averaged 515.6 miles an hour, which dropped his overall average down to 531. And uh, I'm sorry, I can't give you better news, but it, through the third lap, it was there.
And so, but, but congratulations for a great, great, great fight. It was surreal when he, you know, told us the speed and this is the average. It's like, huh, that's it, you know, the end. No fairy tale ending, no fireworks, no celebration. It's just kind of this, huh. This engine uh, ran real well, but uh, it uh, unfortunately uh, missed the beat by about 30 seconds. <laughs> we we do our best to uh, figure all the variables, but uh, that's racing. Before the fourth pass, the oil pressure began fluctuating, and these engines, when they start losing oil pressure, something is going to explode. Uh, and I was faced with this decision of, do I go out, do I come back? Uh, so I just quickly turned the airplane around, but I could feel that it bled a lot of speed off. I know the limitations of the airplane. I know what I can get away with, and I know what I can't get away with. And this was a decision that was right on the edge of that. It's a bit hard going to sleep at night because it'll keep me up. <laughs> you know, you always go through the what ifs. Uh, so I tend to try not to think about it. And hopefully there will be a next chapter at some point. You know, it's like just missing Everest. To set the record, you have to beat the previous record by 1%. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're pushing the speeds that these guys are pushing, it's very difficult to do. You know, you set a goal and uh, he went out and executed it uh, just like they had planned. And with any luck, you know, Steve might get another chance to do it. We know where to improve the airplane and we know where to improve the engine. And that gives us hope that if we do get a chance to do this again, we'll be able to break that 535 mile an hour number. As a matter of fact, now we have to go 536 miles an hour because we have to break our old record by 1%. So here we go. 